What happened to that man under there? What's going on with that guy? I wonder if we can get him out of there. Oh my goodness. Is there anything left inside there? Call 911. This, something must have happened to this guy because I can't even see inside. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, I'm giving you a flashback of an actual event. An actual event that happened to me many years ago. I was driving to work late at night. I decided I didn't need a nap. I decided I didn't need to sleep. But what happened was the inconceivable. I fell off the highway 50 feet down. It's okay, I'm still alive, right? But in that moment, in that split second, I didn't know what had happened. I didn't know what had happened until a few firemen had come on and started taking me out. I had realized I had fallen asleep on the wheel. And I didn't realize that until I woke up and they were getting me out of the car. I say a car loosely only because it was a ball of metal. I had fallen 15 feet from the highway down. They said it must have spent at least six times and flipped over seven times and I'm still here today it is an unlikable story but it's true how do I don't remember this is because I was completely out had not been drinking I promise you I had not been drinking I drunk before this was not it so exhausted from working over 70 hours a week in the restaurant business leaving work at 3 o'clock in the morning, working a double shift. I was out. They say some experts that if I would have been awake, who knows what would have happened to me. You see, the body took over and reacted for me. I like to believe it was something bigger that took care of me. That's me. Two-thirds of your life, supposedly, we're awake. One third of our life, we're asleep. Or are we? Are you getting the sleep you're supposed to get? Are you taking care of the most important part of your life, which is taking care of your body? The one machine that you control, are you taking good care of it? Well, you gotta let it rest. Today I'm gonna talk about three things that you can do. Now some of you are looking at me and saying, Mike, do you want me to go buy an expensive bed? And do you? No, no. <laughs> it's not about that. Three things you can do that it doesn't cost anything. It just requires you to follow these steps that I got from Dr. Michael Bruce. He's a board certified sleep specialist. He's a clinical psychologist, and you can find him. He's very well known. Three things you must do. The first thing you have to do is your intake. You have to control your intake. Alcohol. Again, it's okay to drink, but two hours to three hours prior to going to bed, don't take any alcohol. And some of you are thinking out there, Mike, I've taken alcohol before and it puts me to sleep real fine. But it reduces your deep sleep. And it is the deep sleep that gives you that 100% feeling of rejuvenation the next morning. Uh, you will not get it unless alcohol two to three hours before. Second in the intake is your large meals. We all love having that, well, I love having that rice and beans and a big, big dinner. I really do. I really enjoy it. I, I love to eat. But we need to make sure two to three hours before you go to bed, you don't even take such a big meal. You could take a small meal, but the large meals, take those early. Again, it makes you tiresome, and it'll wake you up in the middle of the night. Even if you don't feel you're waking up in the middle of the night, it will wake you up in the middle of the night. You just won't know. You just won't know. And lastly, caffeine. Now, we all love our lattes and coffee, but five hours prior to going to bed, don't take any caffeine. Again, it'll make you jittery, and you won't get that true sleep. That's the first thing, the intakes. The second thing is, some of you are going to look at me and say, you've said this before. Somewhat, it's a little different. It's your exercise. You have to exercise. A regular exercise will get your body ticking in a certain way. You cannot run a mile and not want to rest after it. It's impossible. It's your natural way for your body to generate itself and say, okay, it's time now for me to rest. So when you finally go to bed, 
you go out. Now, you don't have to run. It could be walking. It could be muscle toning. Exercise helps. And inside that exercise, here's an exercise I haven't mentioned before, and that's reading. Reading helps you go to sleep. Now, if you're reading a horror novel or a mystery, you're not going to bed. It has to be a motivational book. Maybe a Sig Ziglar book or Stephen Cobby or Roberts or somebody that motivates you. Read those books. Not a, just a couple of chapters before you go to bed. And that's two things for you. It motivates your mind and it lets you rest in a positive manner. You can go to bed and be worried about what you didn't do and what you couldn't do. So grab a book. That's a, an exercise. And lastly, last step is your sleep hygiene. Now, when I read this, sleep hygiene, I said, do I have to floss my brain? What kind of hygiene are they talking about? Do I have to wash up my brain so I can sleep? No. When they talk about sleep hygiene, they're really talking about two things. Your sleep cycle and light and temperature. Sleep cycle means two hours prior to going to bed and two hours before going to bed. So if you normally go to bed at 9 p.m., try to go to bed between 7 and 11. If you do that regularly, you go out much quicker. And wake up time is within an hour. So if you know you gotta come to Toastmasters normally, try to always wake up an hour earlier and an hour later. Make it a habit. That's your sleep cycle. It'll regenerate itself. And lastly, the light. It is very difficult. The body knows when the light comes on, you're supposed to get up. It's a natural function that the body does. So Toastmasters, today, three things I spoke to you about. How do we get a good night rest? It is so important. Two-thirds of your life, you are awake. But one-third, you're supposed to be asleep. Are you really sleeping eight hours a day? Or are you sleeping less? Are you cheating your body of what it needs? I suggest today, I end you with this quote. And this is a quote from Stephen Covey. Stephen Covey says this, it's not what happens to you, it's our interpretation of what happens to you. You're gonna have a tough time in life interpreting anything if you can't wake up in the morning. Those guys. <laughs>